Okay, um, hello everyone. Um, I'm here to, uh, to talk to you about a very important test um, that is used in microbiology. And uh, it's to identify um, enterobacteria, the ones that live in your, in your gut. And, um, you know, I, I have another video that talks about nitrate reduction tests. Maybe uh, you want to look at that as well because there are many different tests that help us identify uh, different types of bacteria, like the big biochemical markers of these bacteria. And the, the vogus proskauer test is, is one of them. There's other ones. And I'm not going to discuss the other ones because the other ones are quite simple to do. You can f easily find information on these tests. But uh, the reason why I want to talk about this uh, vogus proskauer test is because um, it is a, a little bit complex. It's not a complicated test, but there's a few things. Uh, it's a multi-step uh, test, if I can say it like that, and, and because of that, it can lead to confusion. And I just want to make sure that your experience uh, with this test is as positive as possible as possible. Now, a little note of caution here, and I, uh, it's important to understand that uh, this is not meant to be diagnostics at all. I'm not trying to, uh, to teach uh, and to help you identify any bacteria in any, um, you know, in any uh, pathologic pathologies or anything like that, right? I'm not a medical doctor or anything like that, but I just want to, this is for students that are part of a microbiology class. I'm doing this mostly for my students, but you know, it, it seems like other people like these uh, videos as well, so I'm trying to help as many people as I can. So um, the vogus proskauer test is a test that will identify um, what happens to, uh, to bacteria when they're in front of glucose and, and how to degrade that glucose and what do they do with that glucose, right? Is there any fermentation and anything? What kind of fermentation we have? So, um, so this is what I want to, uh, to, to talk about uh, in, this, uh, in this video. So it starts like this, right? What we have here is a, a bacteria that would, uh, would be exposed in a broth, probably uh, most likely a liquid broth, um, to this uh, wonderful energetic molecule here that we have uh, known as, uh, as glucose, right? And uh, glucose uh, can follow different pathways. So uh, sometimes this glucose is used by the cells and it, 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 is, it goes through a process called um, glycolysis. And I'm not going to go through the, this process of glycolysis. That probably will be the subject in a, another video and another, another time. But through glycolysis, there's a series of multi-enzyme steps that happen. Glucose is being degraded in simpler molecules. And eventually, it leads to that, the production of that molecule here, which is called uh, pyruvate. And that pyruvate, there's different things that can happen to it. And there's basically um, three different outcomes uh, that uh, we will measure in the uh, vogus proskauer test. And that test, please, um, I forgot to mention that, but it, it's also combined with another test called a um, uh, MR test, methyl red test. So it's MRVP test, so methyl red vogus proskauer test. So I forgot to mention that. So um, one of the outcomes that can happen is that when uh, certain types of bacteria, including E. coli, uh, use pyruvate and then they ferment pyruvate, they can produce different types of molecules as we can see here. And those molecules are uh, acid, acidic molecules. So what we have here is lactic acid, succinic acid, and acid, acetic acid as well. So referred as to lactate, succinate, and also um, acetate. And um, those are called uh, acidic stable products. So what I mean by that, and what we mean by acidic uh, stable acidic products is that these are no long, no um, further, there's no metabolism of this. They stay in the tube, right? Bacteria will stop transforming pyruvate, create these, these, uh, these mo acidic molecules, and those molecules will stay in the tube after that as being stable products. Now, another outcome that can happen is that it can, pr it can produce um, neutral stable products. So you see those ones were acidic, these ones are neutral, right? So acidic pH that's below uh, 7, probably below 6, and all of that. And uh, some, some other products could be produced and be uh, neutral uh, products. Now, please remember one thing is that one thing or the other is going to happen, right? I'm not sure if everything can happen at the same time, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident to say that either acidic products are being produced or um, we have um, uh, neutral products here. And the neutral products in our case here could be uh, and, and produced by uh, the enterobacteria will be acetoin 
and a butane diol in those uh, in those products here. Another outcome of uh, glucose uh, utilization is this. So what we have here is that we, we, we would have pyruvate as a result of uh, glycolysis, as I mentioned earlier, and then we have complete degradation of that uh, of that molecule. It goes through the so-called Krebs cycle and everything, everything is, gets degraded, ATP is produced at the end and all of that. So not going uh, to explain all of that pathway and everything that's out of the, the goal of this uh, this video today. But what I wanted to, to show is just like the different outcomes. So first outcome, acidic products, second outcome, neutral products, or uh, another outcome that can happen. And I said first, second, there's no particular order here. All of these things can happen, one or the other or the other. And then pyruvate and sugar, glucose can be transformed to pyruvate further degraded to down to a very, very simple molecule such as carbon dioxide, for example. So this is uh, where we're going to go. Now, because we're, use, we're measuring if there's any acidity, uh, any acidic products produced in our tubes, we will need a pH indi indicator, right? We need something that tells us what the pH is. We're not really interested in knowing exactly what the pH is. Like, we're not interested in the, to be very precise, to know that like, it's 4.2 or 3.62 pH, we don't care about that. But what we're interested in know is knowing do we have acidity in there or not? Is it neutral or acidic? And that counts a lot. So what we will have in this case, we will add a molecule to our tubes, to our broth, and that molecule is methyl red. And methyl red has a pH range like all the other pH indicators. And methyl red we have the molecule here, and methyl red will have will, would change color depending on pH. So it will remain red, um, it, will, it will pH methyl red will be red if the pH is equal or lower than 4.4. So in a, in an acidic in a nutshell in an acidic environment, uh, methyl red is red. Now, if the pH goes uh, higher than 4.4 it will move to the color orange and eventually yellow when the pH reaches, reaches 6.2 and above, right? So in the neutral to basic uh, part of the pH, we will have yellow, right? So basically what we have here is three different outcomes, um, basically two, either it's red or yellow, orange included, included uh, in that as well, okay? So red, yellow, orange, and uh, so, like that. This is what we have here. So we would have those three different colors in our tubes. Uh, it's a very fun experiment. It always gives us, uh, you know, nice colors to look at, and those are uh, very typical colors and, and tubes. So, now let's look at one of the outcomes that we discussed before. So let's come back to our glucose molecule right here. That glucose molecule gets transformed through the glycolysis process into pyruvate and produces these acids, right? So we say in this case here, if there's a fermentation, if glucose is transformed to pyruvate and then this pyruvate is, trans is transformed into um, another molecule, uh, and usually by accepting electrons, um, then it forms these acids here. And we say in this case that this type of fermentation is called mixed acid fermentation. Now, you can imagine that if you have a tube and you have bacteria, you, you have an unknown, you don't know what kind of bacteria you have in there, and then you have bacteria that uh, after growing these bacteria in a, in a tube with methyl red, if after adding methyl red to your growth medium uh, and the color is, uh, is uh, and your bacteria produces acid, then the color of your tube after you add methyl red will be red, right? Because you're producing acids, and these acids will lower the pH below 4.4, therefore will give you what is between those two arrows here in the color red right there, right? Very easy to understand here. So in this case, if we do have a red test, so we do the, we're, what we're doing right now is the MRVP test. So the MR portion of that test, metal red, in this case here, we'd be positive, right? We know we have fermentation of glucose and created those stable acidic products. That's a positive test, okay? We know something happened. There is enzymes, fermentation, and everything. So we're happy. That helps us to identify bacteria. 
uh, combined with other tests, combined with gram staining, combined with morphology, um, organizations of uh, cells and colony growth and what kind of medium they grow on and, and all of that, right? I produced a video about McConkie plays, the methyl, uh, the, the, uh, the salt, uh, mantle salt agar. You can watch that, and that also helps you identify bacteria. So, so, um, so that would be a positive test. Now, sometimes um, something else happens, and, uh, and then uh, we have uh, pyruvate that is completely degraded, right? That produces neutral products. Um, there's no acidity here and uh, no, no acidity that we could measure actually and in this case uh, our methyl red test would be yellow, right? We don't have acidity. So in that case it tells us, well, you know, since there are no ferment, there's no fermentation, what actually happened in my tube? I don't know, right? So it could be this, this could be an outcome. My glucose has been uh, transformed completely, metabolized completely, or it went this way, right? It produced this acetoin and butane diol, but the thing is here is that it remains yellow, right? This is yellow and this is yellow too in your tube if you add, if you add uh, methyl red to it. Why? Because the pH is above 4.4, probably more like 6 or something. So you would have a tube that gives you a color, either the color orange or the color yellow but certainly not red because you don't have any acidic products in that. Now, the question is this, which one is which? Which one happened? What happened? Did your bacteria in your tube, did they do this or did they do that, right? We don't know. So what do we do? Now we need to perform a test for this. And what do we do in this case? What we, what we would do in this case is that, say that in your tube um, you have these products here, right? So we have the product products of our uh, fermentation, neutral products, we have acetoin right here, we have butane diol at the same time, and what we would do is this. We would add two components to that. We would add uh, two chemicals, the alpha naphthol. Please remember one thing, okay? If you watch the, uh, the, the nitrate fermenter, uh, fermenting, uh, fermentation, uh, sorry, nitrate reduction test before, please remember one thing is that in the nitrate, ferment, uh, nitrate reduction test, we use alpha naphthylamine. In this test, we use alpha naphthol. Very different. One is an amine, the other one is an alcohol, right? They will react differently, right? So it's very important that you identify the right one in here, right? So coming back to our test here. We have, maybe we have this in our tube. We don't know, right? The outcome could be either glucose was fermented completely, not fermented, but degraded from completely, or it was fermented into as, as, um, acetoin and butane diol. So anyway, we don't know what we have in our tube. What we do then is we add alpha naphthol and we add KOH as well, potassium hydroxide. When we add this, if there is acetoin in it, so basically if neutral product fermentation happened, if there is acetoin, we will, the, the reaction will be that it's going to create diacetyl and guanine in peptone, right? So guanidine that is uh, found in, in your peptone because um, you have uh, peptones in your, um, in your tubes, right? So what you have here is you have the, the, this compound here and that compound would turn red, right? So that's the VP test. Now, not to be confound, not to be confused with the red of the MR methyl red test. Two different tests, right? In the MR test, we only add a, an, um, a pH indicator that changes color, either red, orange, yellow. But in this case here, we didn't have a positive test. We had yellow, so we know there's no acidic components here. We want to be able to identify. Did we, it, did the glucose in my medium, was it degraded completely or was it fermented into those neutral products? Well, if it was fermented into those neutral products, the reaction of these neutral products here, more specifically acetoin with alpha naphthol and um, potassium hydroxide, will create these two components here and it would give us in our tube a color red. One thing that's very important here is a technical side to this. 
And that's important because sometimes my students have looked at that and then um, and there's no uh, no color change and what's happening, what's happening. It's supposed to react in 20 minutes, I don't have anything. One thing that's very important is that KOH needs to be uh, with oxygen. And so what I, uh, what I recommend in this case is that you hold your tube and uh, just imagine that this is your tube right here and what you would do is you would gently just um, tip the tube like this just to make sure that there's a little vortex being created in that tube. You would do this for about two minutes, right? So you, maybe you'll get bored doing that, but it's, it, it pays off, believe me. After you've been doing this for two minutes, what you would do is just put your, um, your tube in uh, the tube rack, wait, and then within 15 to 20 minutes, if there's no color change, if there's no red color appearing, then you do have a negative test for VP. And uh, in that case, you would know that you don't have, so if you don't have any red, you know that you don't have a, a, an MR test that's positive, it was yellow, right? And you don't have a VP test that's positive either. There's, so there's no acetoin and neutral products produced. So what do you have? Well, glucose was completely degraded in that case. So hopefully this really helped you. Um, I hope um, I hope that um, you know if you ever do this test in the, in a lab, um, you know you'll get uh, top marks for this because now hopefully you understand everything about it. Okay. So thank you.